So if you haven't been kept up to date, the bubble mu is actually exploding in value and it's seemingly climbing very quickly. Now, anything that has a name like bubble mu, or if a name or a nickname gets given to a specific card, you can pretty confidently say that it's becoming somewhat iconic of a generation. I mean, we're kind of getting these new names for cards. You know, we've obviously had Moonbrion, which everyone knows that's a very iconic name for Umbreon VMAX. Now we've kind of got this new Sunzard for the new Charizard 151 and I've kind of noticed that name really appearing very commonly now. And of course we have Bubble Mew, which has always been a bit of the name though. This card is really, really gaining some strength. And I want to take you through that today and kind of speak what I think this means for Bubble Mew, but what also this means for Pal Day and Fates, because, you know, we have to be real, the sealed product usually rises in correlation to the value of the cards inside the set. It's very rare for a set to have very expensive cards inside the set, and the set be undervalued or not rise in price as well. It does happen. I mean, Crown Zenith earlier this year, all the singles rised a lot, and the Crown Zenith ETBs and sealed product didn't move. So it does happen, but it definitely is more of the rare scenario. Usually what happens is very much more like what happens with Pokemon 151 at the moment, where you can kind of see everything starts raising together all at the same time. Now, Pal Day and Fates is interesting because we only really have the bubble mu that's exploding at this time, though it's gonna be interesting probably in the next three to six months what this product can offer. Now also guys, I just want to say, if it is your first time tuning in, my name is Phil, I am a marketing professional and I run this Pokemon investing and collecting YouTube channel. Please feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel. I'd honestly love to have you on board. Like I really talk about Pokemon collecting and Pokemon investing and also put a little bit of personal development stuff along the way as well. I obviously love collecting Pokemon cards. It's a big passion of mine. And hopefully that sometimes when you consume this content, you can kind of apply it to other areas of your life and you know, grow in all those good areas in your life. But Talking about the bubble new, firstly, I want to talk about the artwork. So I'm here on it right now. I've got to say, I have to give it to it, man. The, the, the drawing and the style of this card is so unique. And of course, it is a shiny version as well. Now, Pal Day and Fates also does include the three special illustration rare cards, which are very, very much the chase cards in the set. And then, of course, after that, you have the shiny Pikachu, which is also a really desired card. But, you know, these three special illustration rares are what everyone really wants. And I have to admit, they have a very unique stylistic approach, all three of these. They're very different from each other, but they're so good. They are really, really top tier artworks. And you know, Pal Day and Fates, it's a specialty set. So it doesn't have that much to offer in terms of, you know, how many special illustration rares are in the actual set. But in saying that, the three that you get are super high quality. So the, I think that that is going to be very interesting for Pal Day and Fates. Now, of course, you do also have the Iono. So I do think Pal Day and Fates now in retrospect is kind of looking really, really cool as a set. But I'm looking here at the special illustration rare pull rates, right? So to pull any special illustration rare, in Paladin Fates is 1 in 58, which is actually more rare than Pokemon 151, which had 1 in 32. Now, if you wanted to pull a specific special illustration rare like the Bubble Mew, it is a 1 in 465 chance to pull the card. So we're definitely getting into rare territory with the pull rates for this Bubble Mew in particular. You know, if you do pull it, you know that you've actually pulled a very, very rare card. Though when we look at that in comparison to other chase cards of the Scarlet and Violet era, because this Bubble Mew is kind of of now leading the way along with Sunzard and of course you've got the Greninja from Twilight Masquerade. These three cards are kind of at the top of their game and obviously there's a lot of other Scarlet and Violet era cards that are growing in value but you know these three in particular are really strong but when we look at the Greninja from Twilight Masquerade this is one of the rarest cards in Scarlet and Violet era with one in 941 chance to pull the Greninja and if you look at the Charizard it is one in 225 packs. So this Bubble Mew is looking at a mid-range level on how how rare it is to pull. Now, given the fact of how rare this card is to pull, I'm actually kind of surprised how long it took to grow in value. Whether or not this is good or bad, in terms of the hobby for Pokemon, I think this is good. I think when we see chase cards going like this in value, I think it's really, really good for the hobby. Though, of course, as a collector, it kind of sucks because you're like, oh, wow, now if I want to add this to my collection, I've got to fork out so much money and you can kind of get kind of like pulled back and think, uh, is it worth it, right? Though, here's the thing, Scarlet and Violet hasn't had much movement with the cards. We've always, you know, you still get so many people fanboying over the Sword and Shield era and they're not ready to move into the Scarlet and Violet. They just talk about the old arts, you know. Uh, you know, It's true, man. I get a lot of comments of people saying, oh man, the I just miss the old arts. Man, I miss VMAX alternate arts. This, this, this. And it's like, 
we're in a new era. So I'm very much a forward thinker, right? I think that these new cards that we're getting are sensational. I think the Bubble Mew, I think the Charizard from 151, I think Greninja all deserve a place. And really, these cards definitely deserve to take their own throne in their own generation. We haven't had that yet, right? I mean, we've had a little bit of flashes of brilliance. So we had Magic Carp at the start of the year, then Greninja did its thing. Now we got Charizard and Bubble Mew also climbing up within the era. Though I do feel we need a few more to, you know, solidify Generation 9 within its own category because I do think at the end of Generation 9, we will be competing with Sword and Shield. I mean, we do have that new upcoming EV set coming up as well. So there's going to be some really cool things happening. But moving on here, I want to talk about the Bubble Mew's pop reports. Interestingly, we can see here that the Bubble Mew has had 8,739 copies sent to PSA. And out of those, 4,519 have came back as a PSA 10. So it does have not the highest PSA 10 rate, not the lowest. But you know, at the same time, you're kind of hoping when you do pull a pack fresh card that it does get a 10. So those PSA 10 pop reports are actually quite low considering that most people that's sending them in would be pack fresh. You know, the, 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 the collector today, as soon as they pull it out of the card, it's top loaded, you know, sleeve top loader and sent off. So the fact that they're getting that, you know, that it's not the highest kind of PSA 10 grade. It is quite difficult to grade. But moving along here, I want to just talk about the pricing of the bubble mute. So I'm on the year graph on TCG player. Now, I want to pull this in to, and I just want to look at the market low. So you can see the spike that it's had there. It's quite enormous, right? But the low it had in the market, where are we? We're looking at 75 USD around in February this year. Now I'm going to pull that in the three month timeline. And you can see it was always sitting at around that 83 range, right? And now you can see whatever happened just recently, this has ballooned all the way to 139 USD, close to double from its previous low. This is getting quite big. When we pull that in the month graph, you can see just how incredible the price increase for this bubble mew has been. Now, what's more interesting about this is it's kind of just started climbing, right? So it's here, you're looking at 97 USD October 15, and now it's at 145. Now, what I think is interesting, we are now in an era where I think we're going to be seeing a lot of cards pop off because you got the bubble mew rise. You've got Charizard also rising, kind of tapering off. The 151 reprint might make it back down. I do believe that it will. I do think that the 151 reprint and this big restock of Blooming Waters is going to make the Charizard definitely taper down in value. Though, you're going to see the knock-on effect happen. Some One card starts rising, another starts rising, and then lo and behold, everything starts climbing up in a bull run together. So definitely, we're going to see interesting things happen. But moving forward to the other chase cards in the set, you can see they're not following the same kind of trend. So I'm on the Charizard right here, and you can see that this is sitting at $108, and its previous low in the market was 103 So technically, this Charizard is right now on a low. I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing this Charizard begin climbing in value slowly but surely. If we pull this in the three month timeline, you can see that this isn't having any movement. Though, given the fact that the Sunzard from 151 is going so high in value, I wouldn't be surprised if we get the knock-on effect happening to this card. It is a really cool card. I really do rate the artwork. So, you know, it is interesting as well. I do think that we might be having a little bit of Charizard fatigue with collectors because, you know, Charizard is always the top chase card in a set. So the fact that we are seeing this, I personally think that collectors have really moved on with Charizard in a lot of ways. We want to see new cards. Even though Charizard is so popular, I would never discredit it as a Pokemon. It's always going to hold value because it's got such a high fan base. I do think the collectors are maturing and they want new things and this bubble new is a perfect example of that. Moving forward as well with the Gardevoir. Now, this Gardevoir as well, looking like it's a little bit undervalued. Right now, I'm going to pull that in the year graph and we can see that this is kind of approaching a new low. 38 USD and now it's at 41 USD. So it's going to be really cool to see what happens with this Gardevoir, how much Paldean Fate stock is still out there in the world. Is there a lot of stock still left out there? Of course there is, but it's going to be pretty crazy to see what happens with these. Is that trickle effect going to happen? Is Charizard going to start booming along with Gardevoir? I mean, Charizard's probably in more of a position to rise, given the fact that Charizard and the Sunzard's already up. So it's kind of like, whoa, Charizard's up. He's, oh, if I can't afford that, I'm going to get the next best in line. And usually collectors think like that. So, you know, it's going to be really cool to see if this card can kind of grow in value in the future. Now, moving along, we can see the ETBs. Now, I'm going to pull that in the year graph. Now, Paladin Fates, 
from what I can see, definitely around, it is pretty available. It's not too hard to get, but you can see as well, the low for an ETB was 35 USD, and now it's currently sitting at around 45 USD. So it doesn't look like we have too much problems getting sealed product. Though it will be interesting if a lot of these cards start rising, it's very likely that the sealed product will follow that trend, especially if people are trying to rip to pull these chase cards. You know, when they see the cards rising, if those three special illustration rows rise, along with the Iono, you know, we could be in an interesting era to see what happens. Now, interestingly, Iono as well is looking like it's at its market low. Look at this, it's sitting at 22 US. I kind of didn't put this on my bingo card because I actually thought the Iono would be climbing more in value, given the fact of last year on Iona, it was like the hottest thing for Paldea Evolved. It's interesting to see that the Paldean Fades hasn't had much movement. You can see that the high it had in the market was 41 USD. I don't usually like looking at the, you know, the start when the cards release because it did release Paldean Fades in January because you kind of get this, it's not really an accurate price representation. It's much better to look at prices even a few weeks after the release because, you know, when they release the cards, they just sell for ridiculous amounts. But you can see as well, this kind of been going on a downwards trajectory. If I pull that in the three month graph, this has gone from 25 USD, 22. So it doesn't look like it's moving anywhere at all. But you know, if these other special illustration rares do start rising, I mean, you can expect that Iona might, you know, follow that same trend. It's not set in stone, but you know, this does likely happen, right? You know, cards do move in those waves. Now moving on to the Pokemon Center exclusive ETB. Now, as you can see on the graph, this is why a lot of people who invest in collectibles always talk about Pokemon Center exclusive products. One, they are far less prone to reprints. Two, you already get the promo card along with an additional promo card with a Pokemon Center stamp on it, which is kind of like a modern first edition stamp. Even though Pokemon Center products aren't immune to reprints, it still makes a big difference having that Pokemon Center stamp. And we can see that when we look at PSA 10 copies sold of Pokemon Center cards, they usually fetch really, really strong prices. Now, here we go. We can see that the Pokemon Center ETB, September was sitting around 67 US and now it's sitting at 78 USD. Again, it's going to be super weird to see what happens with sealed product. Of course, if they all start rising, they'll rise together. Though in saying that, I do think Paldean Fates is a little bit underrated at the moment. And I think ignoring Paldean Fates is a huge mistake. And you can see exactly what I mean by clicking this video on screen right here. Within this video on screen right here, I opened two Paldean Fates ETBs and I was pretty surprised with what I pulled. If you enjoy box breaks and you like the channel, click that video that's appearing on screen and I'll see you there.